Hey guys, so today I want to talk a little bit about how to model acoustic instruments with the Digitone. I've gone ahead and already modeled a alto flute for you. That's what it sounds like. How did I do this? Well, I went ahead and took a sampled alto flute. I'm using Ableton, Ableton Suite. That's where uh, these instruments came with it. Here's what the sampled instrument sounds like and looks like on your spectrum. So this is a program called Visual Analyzer. And at the top it shows us our waveform, and at the bottom it's showing us our frequency spectrum. But the frequency spectrum is what we're really paying attention to. As you can see, they're pretty close in frequency and in movement, but not exact. This is just as close as I could get it. <laughs> So in order to do that, I just messed with the settings until I got it right. This process took a really long time. Most people aren't going to be interested in doing this kind of thing, but for those that are, that are, this is how I did it. Okay, so I just went ahead and copied the synth one page over. We're pretty much only changing our B parameter, and make sure your X is on negative 61. It, you don't want it to be all the way over on the X channel. We want to have a couple of frequencies coming in from the Y channel. Now I'm going to copy the synth two page over. These are the settings that got the frequencies that I needed. It's going to be really loud. <laughs> Obviously, there are too many frequencies, which is why we're going to need to filter them out with the filter page. But of course, there's two filter pages that we need to copy over. I'm going to turn the level up so we can hear it. Because once you start filtering things, you're going to need to use your level really brings it down in volume. Might as well use our volume here and bring it all the way up too. Okay. Now we're going to copy our amplitude page, our amplitude parameter. Make sure you don't hit the octave button by accident like I did. Okay, and copy the amp page 2 over. Now what this is going to do is it's going to add movement to our frequencies. If you notice, they're just sitting there. They're really not moving up and down like our acoustic one does. So we're going to add a little bit of movement by just adding chorus, delay, and reverb. And now you can see them moving up and down, but the, the movement still isn't pro correct. We're gonna have to use the LFO to really get that vibrato correct. Okay, so our filter frequency parameter is going to our filter page and it's taking this frequency parameter, this right here, and it's just wobbling it back and forth. And that's what creates the vibrato-like movement. And then the first parameter is our pitch parameter. So if you listen to the alto flute really closely, it has a little bit of a pitch bend right at the beginning. I guess it's because when you blow into the flute, it's just not going to be the same note as it is once you have a constant air movement going through the instrument. 
So at first you need to have a pitch bin. Um, I did that by making it so that the mode was set to half mode and so that our start starting phase was set to start later. And that's, that's a really important parameter because if I turn it off, this is what it sounds like. It's got way too much going on there, so it needs to be set to 17. And the mode is also really important. Because if you have it continue to go on, instead of just half, it, it will do it when you don't want it to do it, which is not at the beginning of the sound. That's the settings for the flute. You can do this with any any instrument that you want. Like a bassoon. So here's a bassoon instrument that I modeled. They're also pretty close, but not exact. And I also did a clarinet. This one still needs some work. frequencies better matched around here and the movement needs to be better. But hopefully now you see that it is possible to model these instruments as long as you can get the um, frequencies lined up properly. And you know you're gonna have to take a, a really long time to try to figure out the algorithm that's perfect for you. And uh, where where the uh, frequency should be at? It's a bit of a guessing game.